Gaius Julius Caesar, a name that echoes over 2,000 years after his death, a Roman leader whose name is etched in history. But what led to his unprecedented rise and his inevitable demise? Gaius Julius Caesar was born in the year 100 BCE to his father, Gaius Julius Caesar, and mother, Aurelia Cotta. And despite his family not being particularly wealthy or having a large influence, Julius was related to the Roman general, Gaius Maurus, which would come in handy as Caesar would go on to marry Cornelia, both an ally of Marius and the daughter of Lucius Cornelius Sulla, one of Rome's most influential politicians during the era, which allowed Caesar a hand up in social matters. However, this marriage did not last long, as Caesar's uncle Marius was defeated during a civil war against the leader Sulla, and shortly after their marriage, Sulla ordered the divorce of Caesar and his wife. In denial, Caesar fled the city and went into hiding. After some family intervention, Caesar would be allowed to return to Rome at the expense of his inheritance to Sulla. This, however, seemed to be the turning point for Caesar, as shortly after he would leave Rome to join the military, where he showed his bravery in combat, earning the civic crown during the siege of Metilene in 80 BC for saving another soldier's life. And shortly after, in 78 BC, following the death of Sulla, Caesar returned to Rome, where he became a prosecutor and was renowned for his speaking abilities. And in commonality, with many other significant features, Caesar couldn't bother with any ordinary life. And in 75 BC, Caesar left the city, boarding a ship towards Rhodes to study philosophy and further practice his speaking skills. However, during his trip across the Aegean Sea, he was captured by pirates who wanted to ransom off the nobleman for 20 talents, which offended Caesar, causing him to recommend a more suitable amount of 50, which most likely greatly confused the pirates as well. Hostages usually don't ask you to increase their ransoms. However, during his captivity, Caesar spoke to his captives as if they were below him, even calling them illiterate if they could not fully understand his writings or poems. Caesar even threatened to crucify the pirates, which they took sarcastically. However, Caesar wasn't joking, and after his ransom was delivered and Caesar was freed, he gathered a naval force, despite having no real military power in the area, and returned to the island where he was held, which is where Caesar turned the tables on his captives and took them as his own prisoners. And with his return, punishment for the pirates was relatively undecided. However, Caesar had his own idea in mind, and visiting the prison where the pirates were being held, he had them crucified. Hey, at least he kept good on his word. And following this event, Caesar began his political and military rise, becoming military tribune and leader of a Roman province in 69 BC. And subsequently, during this year, his wife Cornelia died, and two years later, Caesar would marry Pompeia, granddaughter of Sulla, yes, the same one that ordered his divorce previously, and the relative of Roman general Pompey, who Caesar would later form an important military alliance. And in 65 BC, Caesar would become the primary host of chariot racing, which gained him publicity, but also at the cost of a lot of money. However, two years later, Caesar was elected Pontifus Maximus, or the title of Pope. Following this, Caesar would divorce Pompeia due to a scandal during one of her women-only events, which Caesar claimed to have no knowledge of the suspicions. And only one year later, Caesar became the governor of Spain. Following several successful military campaigns and political moves, with the help of Pompey and Crassius, a wealthy Roman, he would become senior of the Roman consul in 59 BC, which again struck a turning point in Caesar's career, both benefiting him in the short term and ultimately leading to his demise in future time. Following this achievement, the three men formed the first triumvirate, an alliance that was seen as unstoppable, which became proven shortly after, with the men taking full control over Rome, an element that severely disturbed the Roman Senate as they understood the power they held and how easily it could be abused. Caesar, however, took quickly to his role as senator, becoming ruler of Gaul in 58 BC, where he led intensive and intricate campaigns to stabilize the region, as well as gaining a large understanding of being a formidable and successful military leader. Alongside his success in Gaul, Caesar would build a bridge across the Rhine and would cross into Britain, feats that seemed impossible prior to his leadership. However, with his vast success as both a military leader and senator, Pompey became irritated, and following the death of Crassius and Julia, Caesar's daughter, Pompey ordered Caesar to give up his military and return to the city. This struck a nerve in Caesar, causing him to cross the Rubicon and enter civil war against Pompey. With Caesar hunting Pompey from Rome to Egypt, Caesar was not letting him slide. And with the arrival of the feared leader in Egypt, Caesar that is, Egyptian leader Ptolemy VIII had Pompey killed 
and his head presented to Caesar. During this time, Caesar found out he was in the midst of a civil war between Ptolemy VIII and secondary leader Cleopatra. And following the common theme, Caesar fell in love with Cleopatra and joined her in overthrowing Ptolemy, inevitably having a son with the new leader named Ptolemy XV. And following his, well, success in Egypt, Caesar wanted to wipe out the remaining supporters of Pompey, spending the next several years hunting them down from Africa to Spain. And following his conquests in 46 BC, the leader would become dictator of Rome. During his reign, Caesar began to reform the city to benefit the lower and middle class, introducing reforms such as regulating the distribution of grain and reforming tax laws, which resulted in Caesar in 44 BC declaring himself dictator for life, which, believe it or not, did not sit well with many politicians. And shortly after, on March 15th, 44 BC, the Ides of March went forth, where senators Gaius Cassius Longinus, Decimus Junius Brutus Albanius, and Marcus Junius Brutus murdered Caesar, stabbing him 23 times in cold blood, with Julius ultimately falling at the feet of a statue of Pompey. And at age 55, Julius Caesar died, ultimately being declared a martyr by the Senate. This greatly upset many of Rome's citizens, resulting in vast civil wars, and eventually the end of the Roman Republic, with Caesar's grandnephew Oct Octavian, also known as Augustus, rising to power in 27 BC. The life of Julius Caesar was indefinitely one for the history books, in many unusual and impressive ways. And despite only being dictator for less than a year, his death would spark the beginning of one of the world's most impressive empires. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on any videos that you would like to see in the future.